school, like I'll know I'm aware of what's going on. Hey guys. Hello everybody. Sorry, we're like, hi, how are you? Freaking out the kinks. We're going to start very soon. So we're waiting for people. Yes, we're waiting for a few people to join in. First, I'm somebody. How are you? So today we're going to talk about business. We did this live. Chef is on his way here. He's just trying to get a few things going. But we did a live, um, I believe it was December 27th or something like that. Something like that. 28th. But we did a live in, New, in uh, New York, in Miami, and we had such a good time with you guys. And a few people came back to say they really enjoyed it and they wanted us to do another one. And we're like, you know what? We want to do another one too. So we're here to talk about business, not just hair business, but all business. Um, we truly enjoy um, exchanging information with you guys, so we wanted this opportunity, yes, opportunity to talk to you about a few things. So it would be great for us to talk about business setup, um, and Chef is very, very passionate about this because a lot of people have one impression of a business setup than what it really is. And um, we've been doing it for over 12 years as a team, but we've been doing Virgin for 11, meaning we started a few other businesses before we uh, did Virgin. Oh, thank you so much. I don't know if you're talking about my glasses or Chef's glasses, because I prefer Chef's glasses, because they're cooler than mine, but next time I'll get them. But anyway, <laughs> anyways, we're gonna talk about business setup and acquiring customers. Um, I'm going to handle the acquiring customer. I mean, we're going to pick back of each other. You know, we yeah. always do that. I love, I love to interrupt you. So um, we're just going to chat. But more than us talking and hearing ourselves, we wanted to hear from you guys. Uh, because I see everyone here. Um, if you're a Virgin Hair Fantasy client, how are you? I love you so much. Um, how you doing? And, and if you're a Chef Ed client, friend, you know, all of that good stuff, then hi to you, hello to you there. We're doing two phones, guys. Yes. So two phones at the same time, you know? Yeah. Yes. So hello, Dan. Hi, Dan Keith. Okay. Dana. So, Dan and Keith, sorry. I apologize. <laughs> um, but right. guys, seriously, we wanted to come on here and just hear from you um, in between our, like, we're going to do back and forth. If I see a question, yeah. I'm going to respond, you know. So if you have any business question, it doesn't matter. Uh, what it is. Um, if we have an answer, we will gladly share. Yeah, for sure. And if we don't know, we don't know. We'll just let yeah. you know. Um, so, business setup. Mm -hmm. Last time we uh, did this in Miami, we told you how to get started. You know, from getting the name to acquiring uh, a logo, uh, GoDaddy, domain, domain name, yeah. um, Instagram setup, all that stuff. And for those of you who missed that live, you missed out on a good thing. Um, you missed out on a good thing. But anyways, we have a blog that specifically answers that from beginning of concept mm -hmm. to you actually having a business. And it's on our blog page on the Virgin Hair Fantasy. So check that out if you wanted to reference that. Um, so you've already done all of that. I'm assuming this will be part two to that. Yep, you already have a business. Yes, you already have um, a business. You've done all the legwork in terms of website, um, you've done domain, you've gotten your name, obviously, because you have a website. Yes. Um, hopefully, it all kind of matches, um, so that way people can recognize you on all fronts. Um, and now, I guess, it's business set up in what are the next steps, right? What are the next steps? Like, what, what will be... Okay, I'll address people who have a website mm -hmm. and people who don't. Because you nowadays, you don't need a website to be a successful business. No, you don't. You don't. You don't need a website. You don't need a website. Some people are selling millions of dollars from their Instagram page. Yep, yep. Or a landing page. You or know. a landing page. Yeah. Um, so somebody asked the question, so I'm going to stop. Love you guys, Jane, and have inspired me. Oh, oh my gosh. 
I'm so proud of you. Congrats. Roxanne, so proud of you. Um, I went on your page recently. Um, really proud of you and what you're doing. Congratulations. Thank you so much for that. Do we deliver to Nigeria? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So, you don't know, um, so we're talking about business setup. Business right? setup. So there's two fronts to that. There's if you have a website and if you don't have a website. For people who don't have a website and you're selling from your Instagram account, there's a few things that you want to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Like make sure your business name, of course, match, like you said, matches your Instagram page. And make sure your Instagram page is a business page. Yeah. Uh, the reason why you wanted a business page is just in case anything happens with you losing your account or uh, you building a reputation on Instagram because we don't know how things are gonna go. Yeah. All we know is you're building some sort of record with Instagram, yeah. which right now is one of the most amazing places where people mingle, people e-commerce, like everything, everything is going down. Socialized business. So I would not necessarily, I would wanna follow their rules, right? Yeah, yeah you wanna follow all their rules, um, you want to make sure that you're abiding by everything. So I feel like you, you start to build a business history with Instagram. And if your personal page has turned into your business page, change the name and clean it up. So Hold up before you continue. Yeah. Um, so And one of the major things about getting it switched from personal to business is the fact that your analytics can now be tracked. Because if you have a business, you want to be able to know who's buying your clothes, what they look like, how old they are, all those things, where they're coming from. So switching to business lets you get all this information for free. But if you stay on your personal, you don't get any of this information. True that. You know, so a lot of good tracking. And then you can also fine tune your account to suit you better um, since you're selling and not just for socializing or just to have a, a personal account. Yes, right. and, and also um, eventually when you get to a place where you have, I guess, over a certain amount of followers, I don't remember if it's 2,000 or 5,000 followers, I don't remember exactly, you can now sell from your Insta story where you can send links and all of that stuff. And I think it's all, 10 grand. And 10,000? Yeah, I think so. 10, okay, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And then not only that, you get in place of linking your... your um, pictures or whatever to a your landing shop. page or yeah. your shop if you have internet. So those are very important things to take into consideration when setting up your IG and um, business setup. This is such a good topic because this is so important. Yeah. Um, now your, your Instagram page, for example, you don't have a website, your Instagram page is now your business page. Mm -hmm. You want to be very mindful that the message you're conveying is on that page. If your page is fun, and let your page be fun. Yeah. If your page is very casual, let it be casual. Just be true to who you are. I think people, there's no uh, right or wrong way to social media, in mm -hmm. my opinion. If you are, if you have a business where you hang out and that's your business, that's your business. You hang out. It doesn't make you unprofessional because you're posting pictures of you hanging out. It's because that is your business. Just make sure that you're um, giving out the message. Your page reflects the kind of message um, that you want to put out there. That's why people look at people's page and I'm like, oh, that's, you know, you learn from someone by looking at their page. Do you think it's best to have a team of marketing versus marketing just by yourself? Um... I agree both both if you're starting a new business and funds are not funds are low very low my fact funds are you have zero, no funds. <laughs> okay you have yeah. no money you don't you can't afford a mar marketing team what you need is is you you have you and you now have to create marketing from there's so much free marketing out there it's crazy if all you do as a new business is follow Gary V on social media read two of his books that are called you can actually borrow these books from crush it and crush crushing it and it. crushing it yeah. you can actually borrow these two books from a public library yeah and you don't need to buy it you know or you can google articles that are written already by him or even reviews of that book will tell you exactly how those two books you read those two books and you follow gary v that's your entire marketing team right there. You don't need nobody else. You don't need to spend no more money because that's what we do now. And he gives out tons of information. I mean, free, free. information. Yeah. Free information. So 
you definitely don't need any of that and you're fine. But now you get to a place in your business where you've made $2 million, for example. Um, so you can afford a marketing team. You still want to streamline that because at the same time, you want to make sure that uh, the team is effective and they're doing exactly what they want. I find that a team can definitely save you time and money. So yes, I would say if you're at the point where you're making uh, a million and up in sales yeah. or even two million around that, I would call that a, a medium sized business. Yeah. You can hire a marketing team. Make sure you do your research and see their work. I mean, even even if you're you're making two thousand um, dollars, you know, marketing is something that you want to pay really close attention to because you need it in different aspects of your business. Mm -hmm. And there's sometimes where you just don't have the money for it. This is where you start to allocate money for marketing, like based on whatever you make. If it's two hundred dollars, if it's two thousand, if it's two hundred. Um, you need to put away at least 1% of that money towards marketing. So that way you always have money put away for marketing. And when it's done, it's done. And you do this either based on its monthly marketing goals or yearly marketing goals. You want to have money just for that so you can access it when you need to. Right. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I think in the beginning of our business, we were like, what's that? Marketing. We really didn't think about a marketing yeah. budget, mm -hmm. but he's absolutely right. You need to set a marketing budget, just like you set a budget for inventory and a budget for, um, what's the word, transportation or whatever the case may be, you need operating costs. Operating costs. Marketing is a big part of it because even if you're getting sales right now, you need something going this to, to make sure that you continue to have sales like it's just automatic and having a marketing budget definitely uh, helps with that um, the industry standard for marketing budget is about three percent but like chef said if you put away one percent and you consistently do that every month that's a great 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 way and to you can always up it yeah you based know, on your sales you yeah. know based on sales yeah so yeah. what else with business so setup? business setup. okay for example you have a website right mm -hmm. first of all we're very picky about website. Tell them about the website and just uh, give us a few tips, maybe one or two tips that a lot of businesses don't do in the back that can actually ensure that they continue to get sales and get repeat customers. Um, I guess one or two things. One would be um, implementing some kind of system where you can keep track of your customers. You know. Okay. Um, oh, Eddie, I, I have to interject. The first time we when we started Virgin, we didn't know this. Yeah. And we all the clients that we had from our first six months of business, we, we don't know who they are. We have no idea who they are. So sad. Where so they're from. Sad. Anything, yeah. So please don't set up no rinky dink website collecting no information, which we did. I mean, the truth is, we, we didn't. If you didn't know, you didn't, we know. didn't know. You know, and we didn't know. So if you don't know, now you know. Please. That you need to have. There's so many that are free. <clears throat> yeah. what's, what's your favorite one? I mean, they're different apps, you know, um, and the apps are based on what no, you... No, website. Just website. website to go, like a platform. I mean, Shopify is my go-to, you know. Um, we're on Shopify, and I love it. You Me know? too. And the cool thing about Shopify is that they're open 24-7, so you have access to them 24-7. Um, with any issue you have on your website, you can literally just call them up and say, hey, this is not working. Someone will walk you through it. Um, and if they can't fix it, then they escalate it up to the higher guys. But either way, you get help 24-7. So Shopify is my favorite. Yeah, mine too. Yeah. Mine too. So I think um, Shopify and then I know there are a couple of apps that you need to get on the website. I think we talked about this before, the apps that yeah. you need. Um, make sure that your information for all your clients is captured. Um, a lot of people start their business, Chef, and they're like, so how do you get your first client? That's such a question that comes up all the time. Such a good question. How do you get your first client? You have easy. to fight for your first client. You do. It's easy. But you have to go get your first client because they don't know who you are. First of all, they don't know what you're doing. So the first thing we did when we started Virgin is we sent a text to everybody in our phone. Everyone. Hi, guys. We just started this new business. Please yeah. let us know if you need hair. We'll give you a discount. Yeah. We sure did. I sent it everybody on his phone, everybody on my phone. We went on our Facebook page, posted it. Made an announcement. Made an announcement. Um, I mean, and the truth is nobody really bought at first. No. We, you just have to keep going. Yeah. And then if that's and then after you've exhausted your immediate 
you know, people that are close to you, um, you know, like you've asked your grandma, grandpa, yeah. you've told your grandma to send to everybody on her phone, you've told her to post it on her Facebook page. And, yeah. You've done all of that. Yeah. Next, now you need to start reaching out to random people. I'm assuming you already have your Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all of that. What I did was I went on Instagram, started DMing people. Mm -hmm. Like you have to like one by one. Hey, I sell hair. Check me out. Boom. Hey, I um, I sell cosmetics. Check me out. Hey, I'm a consultant. Um, I do makeup. Let me know if you need my services. Like they're you know right now the the way things are set up. If you start a new business, all you have is time. You have to give it time. If you're not going to give it money, you have to give it time. And then for those of you who started a new business and you have the funds, you will hire a company or people to help you generate leads, which is what you need for a business. You're going to go on Facebook and buy Facebook ads. I would advise that you go with a company that knows how to make Facebook ads. Otherwise, you're wasting money. <laughs> you will go on Instagram and buy Instagram ads. You know, make sure you get advice from a company that knows how to create Instagram ads to help you. So for people who have the funds to do it, you can hire companies to do, to generate leads for your company. And then for uh, people who don't have the funds, like we, we didn't, you just have to literally, it's called elbow work, I guess what they call it, like the grind. Yeah, I mean, you just, just got DM, to get in there. Start DMing yeah. people, you know, go on like hair blogs. Uh, comments. Comments. Visit the most popular pages yes. on Instagram, on Facebook, wherever you are, right? Visit those people that, that are, are in your industry. For you, it'll be food. For me, it'll be hair and beauty, you know, whatever your industry is. And you don't even have to. You can literally go. Actually, the thing everywhere. Is, you go everywhere and you're commenting, but your commenting now has to be based on where, where you are or what's going on. You know what I mean? So, but it has to be something that's heartfelt, you know, not It has like, to be authentic. Hey guys, nice. buy my product. Hey guys. Never selling your product, but no. answering the question of the comment or the post or just adding value to that post. For example, if, if there's a picture of a girl who won an award, you're not going to go in there and say, hey guys, um, buy my product. No, you're going to say, oh my gosh, congratulations on your award yeah. and keep it moving. Yeah. I know that's not you selling, but that's you putting yourself out there as a contributor to that community. Yeah. And the thing about social media, new business, it's the same thing as life. You give, just keep giving and you'll come back. Like when you're in a community, somebody sees that, oh, that was such a nice comment that that person posted. Oh, and who is that person? That's the virgin hair fantasy hair. Oh, they probably sell hair. Let me click on them. That's literally how it goes down. Because I know I go on comments and I see certain comments when people are like, buy my, I, I don't even look. Yeah. If you actually contribute to the post in terms of, oh, that's so sweet nice. or, oh, that was so nice. Ah, that same thing happened to me too. I can't believe it. Now, I will always say negative comments. Mm -mm. I, I, whenever, whenever there's, if I'm in a business setting and there's something that has to do with negativity, I stay away from it. I run away from it. I fly away from it. I don't play with it. I don't do negative comments because I feel like that that's not my brand. Yeah. Now, if your brand is that, that's everyone has a different brand. Yeah. But if your brand is about something different, be very careful where you leave your comment because you're literally leaving your footprint all sure. over this thing here called the internet. Yep. And it's free information and you know Period. everyone has access to it. So yeah. this is the internet has now become your resume. So whatever is. you do in different places, watch it. you know, there are companies now that just track all this information and they, you know, so it's easy for someone wanting to work with you to go and look up your social history and just see how you've been posting it, gallivanting or not. Mm -hmm. So you literally can generate your own leads if you can't afford to pay a company to help you generate leads by you know, it's still the top place. YouTube videos, a great way to get sales. Um, how do you get sales on YouTube? You don't do a video saying, hey guys, my name is, which is what I did. Yeah. I didn't know. Hey guys, my name is Jay with the Virgin Fantasy. We sell hair. Nobody wants to see those kind of videos. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. You guys are the best. I have learned something very important from you today. Thank you for your advice. What did you learn? You know why I'm asking? Because I want to tell that to somebody. I like to know what, what, what it was that was good so i can share it again please and drop the useful useless information uh, exactly so i don't yeah. come on here talking about nothing else anyways yeah tell me what you learned i appreciate you commenting that means a lot to us uh what was i saying no, I don't know. um 
you were saying <laughs> I don't know what you're yeah, saying. You what were you saying? You have to remember. Oh no, yeah, you were you were talking about um the advice. What advice? Business advice. Yeah, the last one we did, right? Okay. Acquiring customers, but then it was um guys. What were we talking <laughs> you about? don't remember either. I totally forgot. <laughs> you know what? You're terrible. <laughs> no, 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 no. But it, it YouTube. Was, Somebody said YouTube. Oh, it was YouTube. Sell it on YouTube. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so she was talking about the commercial she did, like um, the video that she did. That, Guess what? Uh, My brain automatically shut down when I brought it up because it was so it was bad. So it bad. was trying to get me out of oh man. Yeah. Anyway, sorry guys. So yeah, anyway, YouTube video. That was this. It was such a. That was terrible. It was. It was. It was not it was a so good bad. idea, and we Come didn't on, know anything man. about like, YouTube. Hi, my so. name is Jane. People want to see a video that says, guess what? My yeah. name is Jane and I'm going to teach you how to da 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 yeah. You need to give. You need to teach. You need to help people. I know it sounds cliche-ish, but that's the only way to make it in business, in my opinion. Business yeah. is that. And I, I go to these big brands. I'm like, hmm, why, why are they teaching how to wear mascara? I said, because they're adding value. Yeah. So you have to um, create tutorials on, on how to not only use your product, but how to do things that are connected to your product. Hello. Hi, how are you? Dweeda. Dweeda. I like your name. Very cool. Very cool name. But questions. yeah. Questions. Yeah. Sorry. Calm down. Okay. <laughs> we, we got some time for some questions. So tell us. Well, not tell us. Ask us, right? Oh, I remember you said in your first class, you said that your client is very important. Yes. Yes. Oh, thank you, Roxanne. Roxanne yeah. yeah, your client is very important because... The reason I started talking about before you actually acquire the client is you work, this is the work you have to put in to get the client. I mean, this mm -hmm. is a lot of work. And now when you have the client, there are things that you need to do. I think, and Roxanne, I'm gonna, I don't wanna just like barely talk about this. I'm gonna talk about this in detail. Um, the next one will be now after you have the client. What to the do? next live that we'll do, I'm gonna bring it up. Keeping very the good client. One. Keeping the client, you know. About DMs and adding that. Oh, thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. Um, questions. Yeah, questions. We want questions. Yes. Do you have any questions? Thanks for tuning. I was about to... The Caribbean came out. Thanks for tuning. I, I heard you. Right. I heard you. I knew, I knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Do you recommend doing wholesale vendor lists when business is slow? Do you recommend doing wholesale or vendor list when business is slow? You know what? It's a very good question. I recommend you doing everything in your power to grow your business. Um, it doesn't take away from your brand if you decide to sell your vendor list um, or if you decide to do wholesale. I will tell you about wholesale because I've done wholesale and now I don't do wholesale anymore. Wholesale is a lot of work for not a lot of profit. So, and it's like you're helping, and there's nothing wrong with that if that's your setup, but I find that wholesale is a bit challenging, but selling vendor lists, easy. Is there a secret to how to post? <laughs> yes. Thanks, lessons. There's a- So, I got this one, excuse wait, me. Wait, wait, wait. So, you just is there a off. secret to how to post? Yeah. That's a big secret. People on Instagram follow pages for two reasons. Either it's funny or they're getting information. Now, the best way to post is to offer a little bit of both, right? So you want to add some kind of funny somehow if it's you doing something silly or you just post something that someone posted that's silly, but then also giving information that people can use to, um, you know, better their lives, right? Or give it to someone that yeah. can better their I, yeah. I agree. And that's when you have to think about what you're doing on Instagram. It's not just posting a picture. Um, and uh, Roxanne had a good question. In business, should I do more lives or show pictures of the product? You need to do both. And you do them like this. Um, I have to be honest with you. If I had, I, I want to do more lives. Lives, people connect with lives very, very intimately because you're right there and they can touch you and feel you. You make mistakes. You, you One of my lives, I almost burnt my eye off. Like, it was so bad. The, the curling iron, like, fell on my eye. And I was loud. I mean, but it, it was, you know, my clients were, you know, making sure I was okay. I almost died that day. But yeah, do both. You have to do both uh, because you want to connect with your audience any which way you can. How do you handle a client who is saying negative comments about your brand after you've put on effort to satisfy them? It's unfortunate. Yes. 
that happens to every single business. It's not unique. Even you can't stop you it. Can't stop it. Um, there's two things from my experience. You try your best to help the client to the best of your ability, which mm -hmm. it looks like you've already done. And if they still have something negative to say, there's absolutely nothing you can do. But you know what you can do to help? That's going to make you feel good and it's going to look good on your uh, reputation on the website or on the internet. Ask the people that are happy about your product. Say, please, can you write a testimonial? There is nothing wrong with asking somebody who loves you to please to write a review. I've had clients, my top clients, I'm like, please, can you write a review about your experience? You're not asking them to lie. You're asking them to tell people how they feel. And guess what? Flood the internet with those. Tell everybody, you know, so that negative, that one negative comment, or t it won't even matter anymore because here are 10 people who love it. So you have to try your best to do it that way. That's why we ask our clients to review our products. I mean, I don't, I know some companies don't want to, you know, come out and say, we need your reviews, especially when you're happy. We want to, you know, we want to hear about it. So I would say, yes, make sure you just do the op, you know, that's happening. There's nothing you can control, but what you can control is send a newsletter or call all your clients and say, hey guys, could you please write a review about us? Simple. I hope that was helpful. How do you... How to have quality packaging oh. so the customer feels as if they're getting an experience rather than a product. Ha! That's a good one. Nice question. That's a nice question. I think uh, based on your industry and cost, um, you know, if you're in beauty, of course, you know, I always compare, like for example, the people that sell those really expensive lotions that are like for acne, do you see the packaging? It's clean, it's crisp, it doesn't have a bunch of colors on it. So I would say whoever is in your industry that's crushing it when it comes to packaging, emulate them. Just emulate them. You, you or your inside. favorite brand. Or your favorite you know? brand. Like we love the packaging of certain designers and how it will just come in like a crisp beautiful box that you can actually reuse and that's what we got inspired by and we wanted our box to be an experience but when we started virgin for the first four years did you have a box no we had a plastic Don't tube man. no we had paper it was paper we used to ship in uh turquoise <laughs> Oh, envelopes it's so that were I don't even crazy know. because so they would bad. open it, it before was, they got to the customer. And it was so bright. And the like, rest would just so fall bright? out. Oh, it was horrible. Man, it was terrible. Our poor clients were like, yeah. They're like, oh my God. Wait. They, would, they loved it. But no. Not the guy. So when you start a business, it takes time. Yeah. You know, we've been doing this 11 years. And we, we literally started doing the box, what, five years ago? Yeah, probably. Probably about five years ago. Before that, it was turquoise envelopes, man. And some other... Heels. Nonsense. So yeah, with flowers. I don't know what, what we're thinking, but that's life. You got it. You got it. So I hope this was helpful, guys. What else? Questions? We're going to leave soon, though. We're going to not waste time, though. We're going to quick ask me question because I'm going to come up. Guys, no, stop. ladies, um, and, you know, since we're here, what are we, what are we, what are we talking about? <laughs> like, we were, 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 we Eat healthy, you know, um, do good business, right? When are you coming back to Miami? Ma ah. Listen, don't don't play with me. I was just talking about that yesterday. Miami was so much fun. Oh, I loved it so much. The my kids, hairstyle's a little different. The kids. She, she, she stole my hairstyle. Oh, somebody yeah. said they love my hair. No, they you, said they, they like our hairstyle and color. Oh, you're so sweet. We have the same barber. <laughs> She stole my bottle. I sure did, because she's awesome. Mm. She's awesome. Yeah. Um, we were in Miami for a holiday. You know, we weren't really doing it. You no, know, we did business, but just pictures, not like transactional. Back of the office business. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, babe. Thank you. So what else we're gonna say? We love you guys so much, and thank you, thank you. We will try to do more. Listen, the only reason why we did this today is because grandma and grandpa has our kids, okay? Because normally on weekends, yeah. I have one person on my neck, I have one on my head, and the other person's on my back. Like, I can't, you know, do anything. Yeah. Habibi, na, hola, from Kuwait. What's up? What's up? Shukran. Hi, from Kuwait. We love you all. Oh, love you too. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for this live. Thank, Thank you, you guys for we joining. We appreciate you. Thank you for joining. And uh, hopefully Chef's phone will allow him to save it. Because my phone, for some reason, is not letting me save nothing. So, anyways, I love y'all. Peace out!
Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. And right. go go get that business going. I love the Faruka Miami. That would be my name. <laughs> thank you. Oh, Sonia, how are you? Happy Sunday. Thank you, Roxanne. Thank you, thank you, guys. What's up, buddy? Hey, Magic. Who's Magic on here? That's Brooklyn, man. Hey, Brooklyn. Brooklyn man. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'll see you guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching. Um, you know, send us a question. You know, and we can answer it and tackle it our next live, right? And yeah, and you know where I run my mouth a lot on my podcast. Go on the go go come come say come say hi on the podcast. I'm gonna post a few podcasts probably. Uh, the book it's crush it and crushing it. Yeah, crush it and crush it. Read crush it first. first, and then the next one read crush so food. it. From yeah. Gary V, yes. Yes, from Gary V, yep. Yes. And there is audio. So, like me and Jane, you know, we love audio books. That's so, all we read. Um, yeah. Ain't nobody got time to be holding a book. I need to use my hands to do I stuff. I gotta read while I'm driving. Uh, you know. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Love you guys. Later. Bye. Later, everybody.